Hey guys, this is Game of Cow. Welcome to our 15th Pokemon Draft Series set here. Can't believe we're actually already here. This is the end of the Wizards of the Coast era. And this apparently text on this box. I have no idea what that says. Uh, too blurry. We're on Skyridge. The final set that Wizards of the Coast ever released. Just five weeks before Pokemon took over and released Ruby Sapphire. It's a very tight schedule at this time of stuff here. And honestly, this is a very, very rare set little of this product actually came out. You want to get the cards in here in real life, they are super expensive. There's a lot of interesting stuff in this one. Uh, I'm not really going to go over too much before we actually start pulling the set here, but I do want to point out a couple of things I kind of want. This Magneton over here is the other partner that Electro could use as far as uh, Stage 1s go, uh, so I definitely want to try that, if nothing else. I think it could be good. The... where is it? The Beedrill is very funny if you actually get enough of this. Like, Auto par Paralysis is very strong, so that could be decent to get. This Alakazam would be good to have because it works very well with the other one from Expedition. That'd be a nice deck to play. The Starmie, both of them actually are pretty good, so I wouldn't mind seeing a set of that. And then, even just looking down, Mistrovus is one that I kind of want, because this would combo pretty well with the Dawn fan that we got three copies of in the previous set. Uh, otherwise, there's a lot of uh, good training. There's a lot of good Pokemon in here still, too. There's uh, Foratrus that does 10 spread to everything that's pretty good. Uh, Golbat, I didn't get the Crobat from before, but the Golbat can do 60 for uh, maxing out your bench on stuff that way for triple acceleration. Uh, not triple acceleration, boost energy, that's the one from this era, still pretty good. And then there's a bunch of really good trainers and stuff too. Relic Hunter is really good just to get supporters and stadium cards out, there's a good couple of good stadiums in here too. Apricorn Maker could work if you get a lot of different Pokeball cards, which there are some in here. Desert Shaman is amazing as far as, you know, just everything goes. It's Judge in a format that doesn't have disruption stuff. So that's really strong. Fisherman is good for decks that mass attach from the hand, like Venusaur could work with that. Um, Oracle is a must. I need to pull at least two of this. Uh, one of the decks has got two, so I need the full playset of this because I have to have this for Entei. Uh, absolutely vital card. And then there's a couple other fun ones. Honestly, I'm just going to talk about them as we go. Uh, some of the hollows don't look particularly good in this set either in comparison, like you just miss all the details in the backgrounds unfortunately, but that's okay. Um, promo wise we get Rockets Hitmonchan, Rockets Mewtwo, and Professor Elm. Strictly speaking we were only supposed to get the Rockets Mewtwo here, but because we are going to, under advice, we are going to rotate to Expedition on after this set, and that means that uh, we do not actually get Rockets Hitmonchan and Professor Elm before they rotate, so we're going to include them in here. Uh, very few promo stuff this time. As far as the actual theme decks go, the main choice is between two Fishermen and two Fastball. I would max out on Town Volunteers if I get this one, but I don't really need it. This one's got my playset enabler anyway. Or we get two Oracle and three Zatu, I guess. Uh, that's mostly it the other stuff we should get here. So let's go ahead and see. We have 36 packs out here. Um, let's just see what we can do. Apparently the, the crystal Pokemon rate is much higher in this set. It's 1 in 12 instead of 1 in 18. So let's just see how it goes. All right, so first thing we got, though honestly, the draft rig over here is not amazing to be honest like it does a decent amount of damage if you can match energy counts not really super good though we do have the steelix as the first hollow to be honest it's pretty nice it's got the same ability as like charizard and uh tyranitar did it turns all of its energy to metal so at least you can attack with anything on it not very good attacks though 20 30 if you get heads and paralysis is nice not really too expensive and then Metal Tail is the same as Aeroblast, or Aero Wing actually, from La Lugia in Neo Revelation. You do 40, but if you flip heads you do 80, flip tails you do nothing if you choose to flip that coin. The Arcanine, might as well talk about the Pokemon first here. This is 
okay, I guess. I don't think it's as good as the other Arcanine that we have, um, but then it's hard to be better than a 100 HP dude that does 80 damage. Uh, if you play this to evolve, though, you can get a bunch of energy out of the discard and charge it on this guy, but you have to discard all the fire in order to do 70 here. I'm not entirely sure where the acceleration for this is coming from, is the thing. 70 is a reasonable number, with Strength Charm you can one-shot a lot of Pokemon with that, uh, outside of Stage 2's, but um, I don't know where the, where the energy is coming from. Fire can accelerate, but usually not when you're discarding all the fire. If you're going to discard, you've got to discard 2 minimum, so why not just play Makago, who can modulate its damage at that point. We have a lot of technical machines in this set, and they're all super weird. Mystery Plate is probably the, the first one here. There's three different ones of this and three of the Miracle Spheres that we see here. The Mystery Plates will do something when the opponent has uh, set prize counts. So this one, if you've got five, if the opponent's got five or more prizes, so the start of the game, search it out for a trainer card, attack, uh, show it to the opponent, put it into your hand. If they have exactly one prize left, you burn, paralyze, and poison the opponent automatically very, very disruptive, but like, this is one turn of attacking, right? You can use it on any of your Pokemon, which is good, but why would you ever want to play this when you have access to baby Pokemon and stuff, right? Uh, for the start of the game, that is. And then late game, if you're on one prize left, is that really going to be enough to swing the tides? I don't know. The Miracle Spheres can be attached to evolutions of particular types, um, this one is Fire, Water, and Psychic, and it does a base 30 damage for free energy, which is really bad, but if you have multiple different types of basic energy on you, then you can do bonus effects. If you have a Water, a Fire, and a Psychic, you will do all, all of the effects on this card. So for Water, Fire, you will do 40 and uh, burn the opponent automatically, with an attack called Freezing Force, okay, sure. Um, if you have a Water and a Psychic, it will discard... No, it shuffles the energy. It doesn't discard it. But you disrupt the energy that's on the opponent. So if you can get all three different types on, you'll do 40, burn, and shuffle the energy away. Not great, to be honest with you. Uh, probably the weakest of them. Uh, Gamma here attaches to a Grass, a Water, or a Lightning evolution Pokemon. Not even basics, by the way. You have to put these on Evolve stuff. Um, if you have... Grass and Lightning energy attached, you do 30 damage in Sleep and Poison, which, okay, that's actually kind of reasonable. Um, if you have Water and Lightning attached, then it does 30 plus 10 more and also snipes 10 on all of the opponent's Pokemon. This one's actually pretty strong, but where are you getting Lightning and Water energy? Like, what deck is playing both of those, right? But if you somehow get all of them, like, this would be really good for Ho-Oh, if Ho-Oh could use it, but it's on evolutions only. So, I don't know where you're using it, but it is very cool, if nothing else. Second pack over here, we do have another Voltorb at 50 HP. This one's pretty good, like, it doesn't do damage with its attack, but it does let you uh, force switch, which is pretty good. And Spin Tackle one-shots baby Pokemon. Does damage to yourself, so not amazing, but still, it's there. Um, we have, what else have we got? The, the Foratress is kind of neat, I guess. Uh, Spinning Blow is whatever, not very good to be honest. Scatterbomb does 10 to your opponent's bench for each coin out of two that you flip heads, but it does 10 to yours if you flip tails. So it could be very strong, or you could just be doing 20 to all of your dupes. Flip the coin, I guess. Um, the Gamma Mystery Plate here, if your opponent's at 5 or more prizes, shovel hand into deck and draw 6 cards. Okay, this lets you use uh, Clever without being clever, I guess, that's kind of cool. Um, if there are exactly 2 prizes, not 1, exactly 2, choose one of your opponent's evolution Pokémon and uh, put it on the bottom of their deck, like devolve the Pokémon, and put it on the bottom of the deck. That's neat. I think you play it for the first effect, but you have to be able to search it out. We didn't get Traveling Salesman. So, probably not searching that guy out. Um, Omanite's interesting just because Omastar can be played immediately on this thing. That's about the best of it. Um, we've got a couple of cool ones in here. Underground Lake is pretty intriguing because it lets you play an Omanite or a Carbotur from the discard pile. 
the Kabutops is really good in this set. And we have uh, the Almanite and the Kabuto from Neo Discovery for this round only that we can use to get more fossil Pokemon in play. So this is a really good play starter if you can get one in the discard. Not sure how you do that in this format, mind you, but I'm sure we'd find a way. Underground Expedition is kind of cute. You look at the bottom four cards of the deck, not the top four, put two of those cards in your hand, then return the others to the bottom of the deck in any order. So that's rather cute, to be honest, but he's not looking very deep, so I don't know. Weird card. Rhydon is interesting only because it could use boost energy, but not when you see that it does nothing if you flip tails. 100 damage is very, very high for this kind of attack though, but it's on 5 energy, let's let's be serious here. Uh, next up, we've got another one of the uh, mystery plates here. This is the last one, actually. If your opponent has 5 or more prizes, draw 3 cards. That's okay on an attack that's not amazing, but hey, it's better than nothing. If they have only one prize, choose two energy attached to defending Pokemon and shuffle them into the deck. Okay, that could actually be really powerful. So don't sleep too much on this one in terms of the, the final bit, because you might just be able to stun the opponent long enough, but if they're playing something like Clefable or Furret, they're just going to get the energy back anyway, so not super amazing. Noctowl lets you look at the top two cards of a player's deck in, or up to two prize cards and put them back in the same order. So that's kind of neat. You get to see what's in your prizes if you haven't already figured it out. You get to see where they are in the prizes, so that could be useful. Uh, maybe as a one-off if you play the other Noctowl for Disruption. I don't know. Um, Dugon, this one does more damage for the energy and the opponent's retreat cost. So... If we had an effect that increased that, this would be decent. I don't think we do in this format, however, so... Uh, yeah, because even if we had the Dark Monk, which we don't, that was when it was active, so it wouldn't work with this thing. Yeah, it's not super good. Um, locking energy from the opponent would be great if that was automatic, but it's on a coin flip, so nope. Uh, yeah, not really very good. There's another... this is the... the Kadabra's notable because it's the last Kadabra that has ever been printed in the TCG because of the Yuri Gala stuff. It's very uh, infamous, to be honest. It's been released fairly recently, actually, so maybe we'll see one eventually, but right now they're not really interested in printing Kadabra, so sad face. Um, it's fine. 40 damage don't apply weakness resistance could be good for uh, dealing with psychic resistant decks. Uh, if you can memory bury this, maybe that's a playable attack. My boy Skarmory still doesn't get a good card. This thing is still terrible. Uh, flip a coin of head switch Skarmory, one of your bench Pokemon. Great, but it's on a metal energy, so you'd want it active anyway. I don't know. They, they never know what to do with Skarmory. Uh, this Poliwag is notable only because Politoed has got Frog Song, right? And so if you recall the Sleep Bubble with, say, Aerodactyl from Neo Revelation, you're able to do 50 damage and auto sleep for one energy. That's kind of insane, so probably the best Poliwag we could play here. A uh, couple of fun stuff here, I didn't mention the Ditto before, it rainbow energies any basic energy that's on it, which it uses to copy the opponent's active attacks, right? You need the same energy, uh, you need the amount of energy that is necessary for the attack, so the fact that it can make all of its energy rainbow means it can copy any attack, which is really fun. Nice take on the Ditto from What's its face? Uh, fossil. Miracle Sphere Alpha, the fire one here. It's on fire, lightning, or fighting. If you've got fire and lightning basic energy, you confuse the opponent, and 30 damage is really, really bad. But if you've got fire and fighting, you do 30 damage plus 10 and remove three damage counters from the thing it's on. Okay, maybe I lied. This is probably the weakest one. Um, I don't know. Gamma is the only good one, to be honest. Uh, these effects are just not strong enough for what it's asking. Uh, it also doesn't stay on the field for more than one turn, so why would you ever use it? Um, Raikou, just like the Suicune and the Entei from the previous set, I don't think we actually saw them, to be honest. So uh, you have to attack, you have to discard a, an energy on this Pokemon to attach a lightning from hand to it absolutely disgusting. Um, you can do a bunch of damage with Lightning Sphere if you flip heads, but just no. This is probably the best of the, 
the legendary beasts, and it is still just pure garbage. Don't even bother. Mischievous is really cool. I did mention this before with the Dawn fan. You count the number of your Pokemon in play that have damage counters on them, and you put that many damage counters on the defending Pokemon. Damage counters, not physical damage. You get free resistance with this. That's the main thing. But it's it's really nice for Dawn fan, because Dawn fan Earthquake puts damage on all your stuff anyway. So it's a fun little combo you can do there. Gets you through some fighting resistance stuff as well. And then there's Apricorn Maker. We have in this set quite a few different Pokeball cards if we can get hold of them. Search your deck for two cards with Ball in the name. So we've got Master Ball at the moment. There is like Friend Ball, Fast Ball, Lure Ball in this set. Um, trying to think. I don't think there's actual regular Pokeball until next set, funnily enough. Uh, other than that, it's not really enough. I don't think they're good enough to, to really use here. So it's not going to be good at this time, I don't think. Pell would probably call me out on that. But I don't think it's super good at this time. However, later on it should be fine. Um, Zatu is a very interesting card because you can play any TM on this thing. So this is supposed to work with all the Miracle Spears and the uh, the type ones, the, like the cubes from previous set. Its attack is also okay if you can flip heads, right? Choose a card from your discard pile, put it on top of the deck, so you can draw a really good card next turn. Ah, still kind of lame. Relic Hunter is a very interesting card. It searches for stadium uh, and or supporter cards, so you can pull the exact supporter you want to play next turn, and also pick up a stadium, of which there are a few really good ones in this set. So, that's kind of fun. Um... I mean, just before we keep going, I really need to say, I, I'm doing this after streaming, it's a really bad idea, but, um... Yeah, I've kind of been, like, talking continuously for five hours and then start doing this. It's a really stupid idea. This pack's pretty good. We've got another Relic Hunter if we do want to start playing with that, if we get the Stadium cards in the set to do it. Desert Shaman is stupidly good. People know this nowadays as Judge. Both players have to uh, shuffle their hand into their deck and draw four cards. This is really good disruption for when uh, for what the opponent's done like last turn and whatnot. Super powerful card. Um, otherwise, what have we got in here? The Hyper Potion. This is really, really bad. This is trying to emulate Super Potion but rotate it out, but it does a terrible job of it. It's like Juggler and Super Potion mixed in. Right. You discard an energy and heal 30 damage, which is one less than Super Potion did. Or if you discard two, it removes five damage counters. Whoop de freaking do is one more than Super Potion, discarding two energy. No, thank you. Moltres, we didn't see the Zapdos pulled in the set last week. I did trade for a couple of them. Uh, you can't attach fire energy directly from your hand to this guy, which is stupid, to be honest with you. Um, its first attack can, if you flip heads, will let you get fire energy from the discard, that's what you're supposed to do with it, but no. And then Burning Tail, if you flip tails for 4 energy by the way, 60 damage and discard a fire attached to Moltres. Just, just no. What does this guy do? If, it, if the opponent's an evolved Pokemon, its retreat cost is 0. Nope. Not really good in the slightest. Um, yeah, nothing else in that one really worth talking about. Let's keep on moving. It's the Articuno, right on cue. Uh, so, yeah, you can't attach from your hand to this thing. Ice Cyclone is a worse blizzard, to be honest. If you flip heads, it does 10 to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. That's really good. But if you flip tails, it does 10 to each of your Pokemon in play. It includes itself, for some reason. Blizzard on Fossil Articuno at least had the, you know, had the decency to not do that. This card is awful. Uh, Fisherman is really good, though. I think it's the first time I've seen this. You recover 4 basic energy from your discard pile. It's super energy retrieval without the discard cost, but it is a supporter for 10. So you have to weigh up the option that way, but generally this is going to be better. Uh, what do you do? Oh, you got to flip a coin for overrun. Rip! Uh, okay, another fisherman is really good. This is a different one? Yeah, this is a different one from what we've already had here. So, if the opponent's five or more prizes, search your deck for up to three basic energy cards. That's kind of fun. Like, Venusaur decks might appreciate that. Um, if the opponent has exactly two prizes, full heal one of your Pokemon. Don't have to discard energy and stuff on it. Um, cute, not really good enough. This Gengar, on the other hand, definitely is. 
if you evolve into your, into this by evolving your active Pokemon, you put a basic Pokemon from your discard pile onto your bench, then flip three coins. For each hedge, choose basic energy attached to it uh, from the discard pile, attach it to that Pokemon. It does not have to be energy of different types either. Um, this is excellent, to be honest. Uh, recovering a basic that got KO'd early by Gust, and then getting energy on it as well, very, very strong card. Its attack is okay. It's about the best I can say for it. Uh, 40 damage, 4 energy is poor. And uh, if heads is burned, fine. I mean, what was it? Uh, Victory Bell did this for 1 energy less. If Tails, Confusion. Confusion's pretty good. So, okay. Uh, maybe. But it's mostly the ability. So, you've got to have a good like reason to do that. But it's it's nice. Definitely a strong one. This is a good pack. Okay. Um, Alright, so the worst bit, we've got Retro Energy. This is just not a good card, right? Um, when you play this to evolve, like, uh, you know, attach to one of your evolved Pokemon, you heal 20 off it, or you can heal 20 off it, and then discard the top card off it. You devolve it by, yeah, like the worst way possible. Um, there is a card that synergizes with this in the set, but like this is effectively just like a, a very bad potion because then you have to actually use the lure ball that would synergize with it in order to make it work. Just just no. Um, Carbotops. I mentioned this is really good. Unfortunately, we don't have the other Carbotops anymore, so we'd have to just rely entirely on this. But uh, we could see. If it's active, the opponent can't play, or uh, neither player can evolve their bench Pokemon. So it does stop you as well. That is something I didn't note, actually. Um, gotta be careful with it, but you can always double gust around it, so that's neat. Um, dual cut is passable, but this is an evolution jammer, and we're not in a basic heavy format right now. Evolutions are everywhere, and if you can jam them quick enough, this is insane, to be honest. Um, its attack is even just passable enough, you know, to make it work. Oh, Polyrath is decent. Uh, if you discard the basic energy whilst it's active, you can confuse the opponent, and then its attack is passable. Uh, if you flip like one heads, it does 60. It still does 40 as a baseline. 110 HP. Big Pokemon. Fighting type is decent enough, so yeah, it's it's fine. Dog Trio with a triple acceleration energy can snipe 30 on the board anywhere. That's got to be worth a look at the very least. And Sandslash is fine. Um, it's not as good as the Foratress that we have in this one in terms of spread damage, because it only spreads to two different Pokemon. But Poison Needle Rush is okay. Like, Fury Swipes is cheaper on the Fossil Sandslash, but this one lets you poison if you get at least one hands. So there's the trade-off. It's it's fine. That's the best I can say for it. This pack is pretty good. So I actually got the Foratress that we just mentioned here. Uh, it reduces damage by 10, so it has uh, better HP than this guy, basically, because it has a passive production on it. Um, it does 10 spread to all of your opponent's uh, bench Pokemon. It doesn't do it to the active, so you could argue whether that's better or worse. Generally, it's going to be better. You double gust something that has a hard time getting out the active, and then do 10 to all of your opponent's bench. Double spin is whatever, you know? Uh, okay, but... Shell Rupture is pretty strong. Starmie is a decent scaling card. This works really well with the Psychic one too. Core Blast is exactly the same as Light Golduck, except it doesn't cost uh, Psychic Energy. It costs a boost energy in terms of numbers, so triple colorless, basically. Really good. Water Gun also scales nicely. So you do 10 for 1, 30 for 2, 50 for 3. That's basically the ideal numbers that you want at uh, 2 and 3 energy, so pretty good. Nido Queen, if it's on the bench, you can just straight up evolve your active Pokemon. Yeah, that's uh, that's good, not much more to say about it. Um, the attack is bad, but that ability is definitely worth looking into, even if it is on a stage 2. You can cheat that out, right, Pokemon Breeder. Bounce Energy is the double colorless for this format. The catch? You have to return a basic energy from one of your Pokemon, the Pokemon you attach it to. So, yeah, it's um, 
It's not very good, if I'm being honest with you, but there are some situations where it might work. Returning the energy to hand means that you can discard it with Juggler, and you're not missing out on the attachment for 10. It also lets you manipulate the energy card count on Alakazam. So that one needs you to do like 80 damage with uh, the same amount of energy cards the opponent has on them. And so you can manipulate it to do it with only two energy instead of three. I don't know. It's fine. Uh, another fisherman, another poly uh, polyrath is kind of okay. Gramble forces the opponent to switch for two. It's really not very good, to be honest. Um, this Haunter is better if you play the new Gengar rather than the other Haunter that I played uh, this round, uh, last round. Shadow Hand is decent. Discard two cards and draw two cards, basically. Uh, lets you get stuff in the discard to use with the Gengar, so that's kind of fun. And then Ancient Ruins is a very strange card. If you don't have a supporter in your hand, show your hand to the opponent, draw a card. Right? Very strange. That's only if you've not played a supporter that turn as well. So, what a weird card, right? I don't know. It's it's decent. Ooh, Crobat. Okay. A couple of bits to to mention with it here, I suppose. Uh, what is the star? You remove two for each energy. Yeah. Okay, whatever. Um, maybe maybe you could use that with Starmie and Memory thingy, or uh, Memory Berry. Uh, the Kakuna. This one was really fun because the uh, sidebar on the E series part of this. If you scan that into the E reader, it had a really funny random attack that you could use. Uh, a couple of the cards in this set have extra attacks, and this one was one I always used to use as a kid because it was hilarious. It wasn't very good, but it was funny. Um, Mystery Zone is a very intriguing trainer card here, stadium card even. Uh, if you have an evolution card in your hand, you can basically get a, an energy out of your deck and then put the evolution card back into the deck. It's like in, in decks that have multiple evolution lines and just need a basic energy for doing something, like this can be okay. It's kind of fun, nothing else. Um, Crobat lets you, once you turn before you attack, flip a coin. Heads, look at your opponent's hand, and basically shuffle away a Pokemon that's in their hand. That's kind of fun. Uh, double Cross is interesting. Like, it's double, uh, like, slam, basically. But if you get two tails, you confuse and poison the opponent. So even if you don't do damage with this thing, you still get to do something. That's kind of fun. Zero Retreat as well, which is interesting. Alright, moving on. Ooh, this is one I wanted to see. So, I mean, another Miracle Sphere, kind of whatever. Magneton is the next partner for Electrode, the last one that we're probably going to look at here. If you evolve into Magneton, you can move any basic energy from your other Pokémon to it. So if you've had to attach, you can use it with the Clefer attaches and stuff as well. But for 40, you know, free energy, 40 damage, that's decent. But discard all the Lightning attached to it, and you can snipe damage on any of the opponent's Pokemon based on the number of energy you discarded. So, as the example it gives here, if you discard three lightning energy, you can put three damage counters on your opponent's board anywhere that you want. So you could kill a baby with that, or you could spread ten to like three different Pokemon, get them set up for other stuff. It's pretty neat. Persian, not amazing, because you've got to flip heads for it on both of its attacks, really. Uh, would be nice to like shuffle one of the opponent's trainers away, but there's a card for that. It's called Noctowl. Just use that. Um, Crystal Shard. Really good for decks that suffer from resistance problems. Uh, it lets you become a colorless type for the turn, which doesn't sound good until you realize that some decks literally lose because minus 30 is way too much to get around. Uh, we have our first Crystal Pokemon here. These are supposed to be 1 in 12 in this one. They are very, very poor. <laughs> Crystal type is such a bad abil ability to have to rely on here. Uh, mostly because these attack costs are atrocious. One fire, one grass, one fighting, one colorless. 50 damage only. It does 20 to itself, so it's not even, you know, amazing with that. And then it also does 10 to every bench Pokemon in play. So it even hurts your own bench for doing this too. Like, oh my god, how? <laughs> it's not a basic either. This is a stage two, so just ridiculous. 
Um, Vaporeon is kind of cool. Uh, the evolutions in this set all have the self-healing power, where if you attach their appropriate typed energy to them, you just heal all the status conditions it's affected by. So very good against the deck I played with Sleep, right? Um, Hit the Splash is nothing special. Aqua Trick is cute. If, um, if the opponent has any energy on them, you flip a coin of heads, then you move uh, that energy elsewhere. So you could move a darkness energy to a clever or something, make it bleed out. It's not amazing, but it also doesn't take very many colored energy, so you could probably do something there. And then I did see the Oracle. This is ridiculous. Uh, this is very, very good right now, and also good if we pull Delcati next set. You choose... This is Mallow in Gen 7. Choose any two cards in your deck, shuffle the rest of the deck, put those cards on top of the deck in any order. We literally have Bill in the format, so Oracle Bill is just a double computer search. This card is insane and is going to see a ton of play this week. I need four of this for Entei Mikago, because with Entei, you basically put two fires from your deck on top of it, and you are guaranteed a double fire acceleration at minimum. This is going to make that deck absurd. Like, definitely at the top here. Alright, we've got a couple of interesting bits in here. Uh, Wigglytuff is a massive fall from grace. Uh, flip a coin if heads do 10 damage times the number of Pokemon you have played. Yes, it's for one less energy than before, but we don't have double colorless, so functionally it's for the same cost. And it is literally just a worse... It's a coin flip for what we had before. Crazy. Its ability, if you could use more than one of it per turn, would be passable at best. You heal 20 damage from both active Pokemon, like yours and your opponents, if you flip heads. It's not even guaranteed, it's just if you flip heads. Ridiculous. Um, fastball is very intriguing, actually. Uh, if you've ever seen Random Receiver, it's basically the same sort of idea as that. Reveal cards in your deck until you get an evolution card, show it to the opponent, put it into your hand, shuffle everything else back. So, pretty good for decks that play maybe at most like two evolution cards. I say evolution cards, not like evolution stages. So if you play the stage two, that would be the only ones you could use. Uh, ideally, you could probably get away with free, but it's most likely good, good at, uh, you know, when you're just about guaranteeing the card that you get. Okay, last one of our first half here. Got another Nido Queen. It's kind of good. Another Underground Lake. So, somebody would want to trade for that, probably. And uh, Venomoth is not very good. You got to flip coins for saying it does heal all of your Pokemon of stuff, so damage swap maybe heal 120, but no. Nah just not very useful. Alright, second half, let's see what we can do. We've still got a lot of stuff I want out of this set. Um, Ledeon is kind of cute. Like, this is a very powerful swift based attack. 50 damage for free energy, doesn't get affected by anything. Good for grass decks to get through metal, actually, because it also doesn't get affected by metal energy. So, that's not too bad. Um, Star Piece is one I'm very interested in with Don Fan, potentially. Uh, if you have this on a bench Pokemon and it has at least two damage counters on it, you get to evolve the Pokemon in between in between turns. That's really good, actually. So, could look out for that one. Um, nothing really to talk about in here. We've kind of had all of these cards before. Uh, second Gengar, that's kind of good. Um, Machamp is more interesting to me, though. Because I want to play at least one of this, probably two of the original Machamp that was in Expedition Base. It doesn't get affected by anything which is not damage from attacks, which is really strong actually. Um, Drag Off lets you swap out before doing damage. You can uh, put a Strength Charm on this and kill a baby Pokemon, which is really good. And Hurricane Punch is fine, like a bit expensive and a little bit unreliable, but now this card is still good because you can basically stop anything that isn't uh, direct damage on the card, so very very good against tricky decks. Aerodactyl is a cute one, a second oracle is super good, a third underground lake too, and the polywag that I know somebody is going to want to trade for, oh ho. Aerodactyl is an intriguing one, if it's the active you get to ignore all pokebodies until the end of your turn. It's not really very good to be totally honest with you, there aren't a lot of good pokebodies right now, but you know, it's neat. 
Pile of Swine, unfortunately very expensive as they always are, doesn't do much for it. Uh, if we had transparent walls in format maybe I could see this, but we don't so just unfortunately trample is too too much. Kills your own guys too. This is a really good pad, Jesus. Okay, so we got the Mischievous. I wanted more of these. Got the Machamp. That's enough of those at this point. We've got the Gengar in the premium slot. We've got three copies of this now, so that's really fun. Hi, Magneton. This card is neat. Um, if it's got two very strange attacks here. Basically, the second one lets you do more damage if you have more Pokemon in play than the opponent. So if you've got a full bench and they only have two, you do 30 more damage with this thing. So that's interesting. Bounce Off is kind of cute. If uh, you don't have the same number of energy cards as the opponent, whoever you ha uh, whoever has lower energy attached... Oh, this is weird to read. Um, if Magneton and the defending Pokemon don't have the same number of energy cards attached to them, the player controlling the active with the fewest number of energy cards attached to it switches one of his or her bench Pokemon with the active. Okay, so it says energy cards too, but basically whoever whoever is lowest in energy number, if you if there isn't a tie, has to switch to Pokemon afterwards. What a bizarre attack! I don't know. It's just very silly. Okay, last one of uh, this group up here. We do have another crystal here, of course we do. Um, yeah, Crystal ho -Oh. It's a pretty card if nothing else, but oh my god, look at these attack costs. Fire and Lightning for 20 damage, like are you serious? Um, Scalding Steam is also really bad too, although it is kind of funny because it's like Ho-Ho using a water attack. That's kind of weird, right? Um, Nido Queen we've already seen, but this is not a bad one to have around. Raichu is pretty cute. It is literally Pichu as a fully evolved thing at this point. Uh, except it takes two energy to do the same thing, I don't quite know why, but whatever. 20 damage to each Pokemon in play with a Poke Body or a Poke Power. So that's pretty fun. If you flip Tails on Lightning Storm, it does two damage counters to itself, and it's, it's okay. My damage output is respectable for a stage one. Um, I didn't mention the Carbito before, it's not as good as the other one, but it does reduce damage done to it by evolved Pokemon only, which is weird. If it reduced by 20, that would make sense, but I don't know. Right, need to take another drink before I go through the last third of this real quick. I say apologies, I did kind of stream for like 5 hours before I started this, so probably shouldn't have done that, but whatever. Okay, this one's pretty good, we've got a couple of new cards to talk on here. Lure Ball, first printing of this. For every coin you flip heads on and 3 chances, you get an evolution card from the discard pile. Put it into hand, really fun. Starmie is actually pretty powerful, I think, here. Uh, the first attack is not great because it's flippy. But uh, you could do a lot of damage if the opponent's got a lot of energy on them as well. Starback is the one I'm interested in here. 40 damage for the free energy on a Psychic type where the other one is Water type. Attach your basic energy from the discard to one of your Pokemon. This works really well with Juggler, actually. So I think if we could get a second copy of this, we could probably play a really good looking Starmie deck this round. That would be pretty strong. Also, it doesn't rely on abilities, so you could use Muck in there as well. Okay, whoa, double Jolteon, how about that? Um, this Jolteon is cute, I actually have this card in real life too, it's pretty nice. Uh, its second attack does damage to each bench Pokemon that has energy on it. So it does include yours, which is a little bit of a shame, but if the opponent is say playing a Venusaur deck and trying to spread their energy around, you could punish them for that. So, it's kind of fun. Um, Wobbuffet over here, if you get poisoned or burned, it copies that status condition on the opponent. Um, return attack is not amazing, but I mean if you get a lot of damage counters on this thing, you're probably going to die next turn, but at the very least, like if you survive a focus band, you could probably do 60 with this. That's cute. Not really super good though. This is an interesting one. So this is our fourth underground lake. I haven't seen Mirage Stadium yet, I'm a little bit concerned about that. Another Desert Shaman is really good. Another Mischievous is really good. Another Crobat is interesting. It's what, three of this now? I haven't gotten the Golbat from this set, which is a bit of a shame. But uh, lots of Nidorina too, which is good to see. 
This is another, wow, lots of, lots of reds in this one. So, another Carbotops is amazing. Another Polyrath, yeah, whatever. Macago is intriguing. Because, yeah, this is, this is actually a really strong card now I'm looking at it too. Eruption is not amazing, I'll be honest. Discard the top card of both players' decks, do uh, 20 for each fire energy that's there, like 20 plus 20 more. If the opponent's not playing fire, then that's not going to do more. You could oracle with this, but why would you? You want to search those cards to draw them? That's just not good. However, fire stream is kind of ludicrous that I'm reading this. So, two fire, two colors, two 60. 60 is a pretty decent number in general. You have to discard the fire attached to it to do it, but whatever. If the opponent's got any bench Pokemon, do 10 damage to all of them. Yeah, that's... that's expensive, but that is really quite strong. I could see this being played as a one-off in uh, the Entei deck. I might try it, because I'm definitely playing Entei this round at this point. We have the oracles for it, so I am definitely testing it. Probably not. Uh, maybe not play it at the weekend, we'll see. Or the weekend we record this stuff. Who knows? Houndoom is an interesting one. Uh, Houndoom tends to be at least somewhat entertaining at the moment. Uh, it does 30 plus 20 for each of the opponent's bench Pokémon minus the number of your bench Pokémon. So this is the opposite of the Magneton that we got earlier on. If you keep your bench lean, which you can do with stuff like Scoop Up, you can do tons of damage with this card. The only problem is that it leaves you in a very compromised game state. Ideally, your board is going to be Houndoom in the active and a Houndoom or Houndour getting set up on the bench. And that's a bit hard to achieve, so... I don't know, I could see it, but that's... No, yeah, no, I could. Energy is going to be a bit of a problem, though. Free energy is a lot to get on without any acceleration stuff. So... Ah, oh, there are gears turning with this, though. If you could somehow use this with Entei, maybe. Electrode isn't very good in this set. Self-Destruct does a ton of damage, but then it does a ton to everything else, too. For 4 energy, that's hard to get going. Yeah, Plasma can help, but... Ah, uh, it's tough. I don't know, maybe you could, you could use this somehow trying to think what would you... I mean, you could use this with the other Electrode, I suppose, but then you're damaging all of them. Nah, it doesn't seem very good. Uh, okay, Desert Shaman number 3, I think this is. That's really good to see. Rhydon in the Holozone. This, this one looks good, though, actually. Um, nothing else too fancy there, so we've got six packs left to go. Haven't seen Mirage Stadium is a concern. Buried Fossil is something we haven't seen yet, actually, too. This lets you pretty much uh, play this as a basic and evolve it into any of the fossil cards. This means you can rare candy into like Carbutops. Uh, I say rare candy, I mean Pokemon Breeder, but like rare candy in the, in the next era. And if you have a basic energy in the hand, you can search for Omanite or Carbuto, show it to the opponent, put it into hand, and then put that energy into the deck. <coughs> Excuse me! So, this actually lets you get the evolution cards out as well. Yeah, it's a good card, it's just it's a 30 HP basic and you can have to play this down as your uh, starting basic, unlike Mysterious Fossil, and it gives up prizes, so caution with it, but definitely not bad. Okay, fourth Gengar, sure, why not? Star Piece is good, and Ancient Ruins, I mean fine, I really wanted Mirage Stadium out of this here. I feel like that's going to be my big miss this round. Desert Shaman is awesome though. Hmm, I'm going to have to consider the stuff that way. Another Buried Fossil too. Um, this Hound Hour is pretty good, to be honest. Um, if you Memory Berry with this, it's going to be great. Like, 10 damage times the number of damage counters on the Hound Hour. Strong card, definitely worth a consideration. This is the first time we've seen Cyclone Energy too, that's another unfortunate one. Um, if you attach this to the active, the opponent has to switch their active out. Very good in opening Cleffer Wars, where the opponent's got like Cleffer and one bench Pokemon or something, and you use Cyclone Energy, the Cleffer, to force them to switch out, and you get Eek for free. Uh, yeah, a bit of a shame to have whiffed that. We've got three of the Bounce Energy, though. Um, more things that would have been nice to have seen more of. I mean, we've got the Polywag, it's fun. Um, Beedrill would have been really good to have seen more of. 
auto paralysis and poison when you evolve the active Kakuna into this thing. And then Needle Rush is whatever. You don't generally play Needle Rush here. You need three heads to do any respectable damage, but I mean, you could YOLO it, get four heads, do 100 damage, kind of fun. But the idea is that you evolve, uh, paralyze, poison them, you retreat because it's got zero retreat, and then you uh, devolution spray. And you can do that to get more status on the next thing as well. Very cool. Uh, Lure Ball is not bad to see. Otherwise, nothing too fancy out of here. So what is in our last pack? It is another Cyclone Energy. Okay, you know what? This is actually a really good last pack. Fastball, we've got like two of those, I think, at this point. So that's decent. Cyclone Energy as a two of is good. Magneton, probably not going to play this, to be honest. But that's fine. And the Makago, which I could consider. The other Makago is excellent for modulating damage output. But this one being able to do spread damage might actually help too. I'll test it. I'm sure I'll test it. Could be could be interesting. Okay, so overall it looks like my big miss was Mirage Stadium. So that is a shame. We are going to have to uh, have to see with that. Mirage Stadium basically gives every Pokemon the uh, confusion flip for retreating. So it's very disruptive. And that is something I may have to either try and trade for, or just hope that I don't have to worry about here. So let's go ahead, we'll remove the duplicates. Only 20 in this set, there's a lot of cards in this set, so you don't get that many duplicates. I also completely missed the Golbat. Uh, Sai also missed the Golbat, so a bit of a shame to be totally honest with you. Um, Alright, spread these out. I should have saved the object first, but whatever. I'll do that in my own time. Uh, yeah, let's spread these out and see what we got. What do we get for duplicates in this set, actually? Um, the Underground Lake is the best one. Also, the Poliwag. That's that's a good one to know. Uh, Fortress, kind of whatever. I didn't mention this Heracross before because it's bad. <laughs> 60 HP, only 30 damage for free energy, 50 if it's got 4 damage counters on it. Then it just dies next turn and you've lost free energy, whatever. Farfetch'd is also really bad, like flip until you get tails, do 10 per head, so that's literally uh, Geodude's attack in Fossil, and it was obviously not very good there, so who cares? Alright, what fun stuff did we get? So we got the two Buried Fossil, which is pretty good, got two of the good Nidoran female, it's only 50 HP compared to the 60 of before, but Call for Family is also on a colorless energy, not two grass, so that's pretty good. Um, yeah, nothing really for the, the Beedrill stuff, unfortunately. The one Raichu, if you're going to play it, you probably need more than that, but still, lots of Nidoqueen. So I could maybe see some interesting stuff coming up with this. I will need to see. Um, obviously it's designed to be used with like the Nido King, which I guess could be fun. But um, yeah, I'll need to see how, uh, how this would work out. But it's definitely intriguing to see. Only two of the Crobat. I actually thought I got more of that, but uh, that's fine. I'm not really looking to play this, to be honest, but uh, it's not terrible. Lots and lots of the Poliwag. There was a spare one in this, too. Good amount of Poliwrath. No Politoad in this set, actually. It's kind of interesting. The, um, the Machamp, like two copies of this, is exactly what I wanted. So we could play that with the Expedition one. Four Gengar is really fun sure I could do some good stuff with that here. Um, Starmie count unfortunately slightly weak. Uh, two water one is good but only one psychic one. I was really hoping to get the other one of these because I think this could actually be legitimately quite strong. But that's fine. I'm sure we'll survive. Two Carbotops. Kind of wish I could have more of it. But maybe not because you can't evolve other bench Pokemon whilst this is out. So maybe you don't play more than two anyway. I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to do some testing on that. Uh, no Flareon, but that Flareon's not amazing anyway. So whatever. There's a deck I could get it in if I wanted to. Three Mistrevis. Ideally, I would have liked four. Three's probably okay though. We could make that work. Uh, what else is fun in here? I mean, lots of birds that we don't care about. Two Zatu. I mean, there's three in the deck, so that's fine. 
plenty of uh, the good Fari, two Makago, these are interesting to be honest. Only one Houndoom, so we can't play that deck sadly. Um, that's fine, then we look at the train account, it's always the most important part for a lot of the consistency. Look at this, four Desert Shaman, so much disruption coming out here. Two Oracle, so I need to take the deck that has Oracle in it, so I can max out on that, but that's okay, we've got a max playset with that, which is really good. Stadium count is looking really poor though. My underground lake is great, but I don't really have the tools to facilitate that. So, I don't know. We'll have to see where that goes. And then, yeah, two star piece is fine. Well, where was the, the relic hunter? We got two copies of that. Okay, you probably don't play more than two anyway. Underground exploration if, or expedition if I do want to play it. Four fishermen is actually really good, I think. Fisherman's in the other deck, so I think. I have to check. Uh, we'll check in a sec. Lots of the, the tool cards. It's whatever. Three fastball, two low ball. No friend ball, actually, uh, which is interesting to know. Show off that in a minute as well. Three bounce energy, two cyclone. Would have liked it to be the other way around, but that's okay. Retro energy, doesn't care. It's a bad card anyway. Um, yeah, so some of the stuff I missed I've wanted. Friend ball. You choose one of the opponent's Pokemon, search your deck for a Pokemon of the same type, and show it to your opponent, put it into hand. Everybody's playing Clefra at the moment, right? So you can search for colorless stuff. Dead easy. Even if you don't play the same type of card uh, deck as your opponent. Dead easy to get. Mirage Stadium is the big one. If you try and retreat during your turn, you have to flip a coin. If you flip Tails, you can't retreat that turn. So. Yeah, we whiffed that one pretty hard, unfortunately. Most of the stuff in here, I think I got an okay amount of what I want. We didn't get the Umbreon either, actually. I don't think this is super great. If it's the active, then bench Pokemon can't use Poké Powers, which is fine. It doesn't disrupt everything, but uh, yeah, we didn't get it, so that's kind of whatever. Didn't really get a lot of Magneton. I only got one Magneton, actually, didn't I, of the right one. Uh, where's the stuff? Where's the stuff? Yeah, I only got one of this one. So, I think Electrode is done. <laughs> I don't think I could play that deck anymore. Uh, with the, with Evolution stuff. I think it's just, it's in, it's where it is. Unless I trade for it, I guess. Maybe we'll try and do that. Um, is there anything else I missed that I really wanted? I guess Omastar is kind of cool. Like, you can't, the opponent can't evolve that active. If it's, uh, if it's there. Uh, yeah, I missed out on a bunch of Houndoom. Gyarados was kind of neat, but we don't really mind. I missed the Alakazam, that's the big one, okay. Yeah, uh, this lets you move in energy from one of your Pokemon to one of your others. Psychic is also kind of punishing too, so that's a bit of a shame. Would have liked to have seen that. Otherwise, yeah, it's about, about good. Um, where's that goal bad actually? Yeah, over here. Would have been cool to have had this, because it is kind of like, um... Oh, which one was it before? It's like there's a Murkrow that has this sort of attack as well. But like 30 plus 10 for each of your uh, Zubat line that's in on the bench. So it does 60 for free if you buff it up properly. That's pretty good. But yeah, we didn't get it, so who cares. Um... Yeah, so, theme decks is the only other bit here. So, we are... Oh, it is in the other deck, that's good. Right, we are definitely taking the this one here. Forget what it's called, like Mind Master or something. Um, it's revolving around the Zatu, and all of the rares in this, <laughs> this deck are the Zatu. It's kind of fun. But um, yeah, you get all of the Miracle Spheres, nobody cares, I've got enough of those. Uh, this completes our Town Volunteers playset, and gives me Oracle. So I have to take this deck because I really need that. As far as the other one goes, like I could have gotten a place out of fastball if I really wanted it, but I already have the fisherman. I have four of this, so and I don't need this many town volunteers. Getting one for trade could be decent, but oh, I don't think I saw the Lapras either. Actually, if we were playing E series only, this Lapras would be exceptionally important because for two energy you search your deck for a supporter when you don't have Clefer to start off with. This might be the way that you have to set yourself up. So, yeah, but we don't need it. I also don't need like Bill's maintenance because I've already got maxed out of that. So, we're good. 
I can show the Flareon too. Uh, it's in the desert. <laughs> Why is it in the desert? Who knows? You have to discard an energy in order to uh, actually use its attack. <laughs> so, it's not very good. You could boost energy in, I suppose. Do 40 for a boost, but there's better uses of that card, I think. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, what a weird set to finish off with, is all I could say. Uh, so when it comes to the actual game stuff of this, we are going to be a couple of weeks out because I have to complete my move and stuff beforehand. Uh, if you are still watching this at this point, then uh, kudos to you for that and hopefully you can appreciate that we are going to have to wait a little while. And uh, yeah, I suppose we'll just have to wait and see what happens from that. Uh, I'm not quite sure there's as many cards out of this set that I play as the previous one, but what is good in here is going to change the format for sure. Desert Shaman is, I mean, we got four copies of this card. This is insane. If we can get some consistency engine stuff going with this, it's going to be nightmarish to deal with. So keep an eye out for that. Alright, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you have found this interesting. We will uh, do some debt test. I might do some profile stuff if I have time during the week, uh, or, you know, leading up to the stuff here. But uh, yeah, don't count on it. We will see. But yeah, thank you for watching. Until next time, take care.